If you somehow didn't see my posts anywhere that I was posting, uh, this thing is progressing by a lot. So now we can actually field this thing in a couple of different ways as is. Uh, it's going to look a little weird because I've got just the knight laying down, but um, the arms can line up, if, you know, if I have some patience in doing it. But we've got melee arms. <laughs> Rabbit Wama says, you know, at some point they should just make a legit chaos army that the chat can summon it. Uh, you know, that's, uh, that's not a bad idea. Just going to say that. We've got our carapace weapons. Those those I finished a long time ago. Well, I put together. I mean, this thing obviously is unfinished, but one day it will be better. Um, but then, oh, there are my arms. Come here, arms. It's not a good idea? Well, it's not a bad idea. So then we have gun arms. Again, it's just going to look a little weird. Thank you so much for the resubscription, Mel Pomino. I appreciate that. Uh, gun arms. So say we want to go full cheese, full current meta, and do dual Avengers Gatling cannons. And we do... Uh, we do one of those. Or if we <laughs> want to do... A melee arm and one of the uh, battle cannon arm. We could do that more traditional version, or the or if we want to do the that one, we can do that one. So, so many, so many options. Uh, the only thing, the only big thing that I haven't completed yet is the magnet inside the thermal cannon. So I don't, I don't have that done, but I'm working on it. Uh, and then of course, the most important thing <laughs> is that. So we can have, we have our full sonic cannon arms. Uh, no, these are, they're, well, I mean, it, they don't fall off, but they just kind of flop around, which is not the worst thing in the world. But um, but yeah, I was thinking what I'll what I'm thinking about doing is doing the base in such a way that, and I'll probably use more magnets to do this. But I'll have um, I'm thinking of making like a wall that's broken that I can put on the base and remove and the wall will be essentially it'll look like he's smashing through the wall and it'll and these will rest on the wall parts somewhere I, like I said I have an idea in my mind for how it's going to work I have to figure out how to do it in reality yeah uh, you, know, you can finally paint it uh, yeah I mean we're, we're getting we're getting real close there's a few more things I need to do uh, like I said, I have to go back and there are a couple little things you add on to the weapon arms once they're functional. But uh, but yes, we are definitely definitely getting close. No oh, savage punch. That would be cool if yeah if you had a titan and you opened up the titan and it was a knight inside the titan and then the person inside. Yeah, I joined a. I, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I joined a Facebook group that's all about knight builders and people. Oh, I, I think I talked about that because some of them have just like 30 knights. That's their <laughs> collection. and Yeah, but people who have these where they this opens up like it's on a hinge and there's a fully painted cockpit inside, sometimes with lights. And it's just like, what are you, what are you people doing? You're, you're just out there to make other people feel bad <laughs> about their, their own hobbies. I mean, that's the only thing Facebook is good for anymore, is groups, trading, and selling stuff. Uh, Hudsonizer, I did see your comment. I 
I'd be willing to put my collection up against any any responsible stick shaker. Okay. All right. But today, today's Figure Friday, which we could do modeling and hobbying on Figure Friday, but we're going to do some other stuff. We are going to look at first, and like I said, I've got a bunch of things around. Let's do, hmm, let's do Transformers. I haven't opened up a Transformer in a while. You all know who this is, right? You may not be familiar with this exact version. I've shown this, I've shown this off on the stream before. Uh, so this is Soundwave. Decepticon turns into a cassette player. Well, the original, anyway. Uh, there have been sound waves over the years that have transformed into other things, as Hasbro has attempted to <laughs> keep sound wave relevant in some ways. Uh, sometimes they he's some kind of a music thing. Sometimes he's just a car and whatever. That's fine. Uh, this was a this was a something exclusive in Japan. And it is actually, it has ceased to function uh, long ago, but <clears throat> you can see there's a, a chip holder in there. This is an MP3 player, Soundwave, which is pretty cool. Uh, it does transform not super well. Move out the head in there. But yeah. So Soundwave is cool. I have, I have a couple of Soundwave. Oh, and this thing is always a pain to get back in there. It's on a spring, and it doesn't like to... Oh, come on. Are you going to embarrass me like this on live stream? I can't believe you're doing this right now. Oh, so close. There we go. Woo! Okay. Hudson Eyes, go ahead with any question. Uh, I did have the original Soundwave. It's long gone to time. Uh, I also had the originals. Uh, Blaster, the Autobots cassette player. And then, of course, those toys are fine, but it was all about the cassettes. The cassettes were a breakthrough both in imagination and toy craftsmanship. If you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, I wish I had one, but I don't to show. So this, the original Soundwave toy was about this big, and its chest opened up. Well, it's cassette player part, and there were little mini cassettes. If you don't know what a cassette tape is, uh, you're going to have to look it up. <laughs> and you're clearly not as old <laughs> as I am. Uh but yeah, the cassette tapes were about, about yay big, and they were pretty flat, and they transformed into, I mean, there were a bunch of them, and they transformed into little humanoid robots, into various animal shapes. They had other parts that you would stick on to add stuff to it, but um, but they were, they were just really darn cool, and Hasbro and Takara made a ton of them. Uh, they were super easy repaints, uh, recolors. Then and then later on, they got really they got even more crazy because they would ha they were actually combining cassettes. All sorts of crazy. I'm so I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> I'm look. I'm old, <laughs> but I'm sure there are there are young people out there who are truly not familiar with cassette tapes. Yeah. So the cassette tapes were again. They were the star of the show. Uh, when you bought Soundwave and or Blaster, they would come with a few of them, and then they sold sold them in packs of cassettes, and just there were there were lots and lots of cassettes, and they were it was so fun to collect all those. I don't have, man, I had a pretty substantial cassette collection when I was little. Those are all all long gone. I have no idea where any of those things went. But over the years. Hasbro and uh, and in Japan they've done some they've done some interesting other things to try to adapt and 
make, basically make homages to the cassettes. So, oh, and then here's a here's a little itty bitty sound wave I have. And these this bottle cap style toys from Japan. Uh, the color is working fine. This toy is in black and white. And because it's black and white, we don't know if that is uh, laser beak or uh, what's the other bird? <laughs> I forget. Because there's at least two of every single cassette tape style. Okay, good, Hudsonizer. <laughs> so you know. Oh, and I did see. So yeah, Hudsonizer asks, which home buddy is most likely to be a robot? Hmm. That's an interesting question. I don't know why, but my mind immediately jumped to Cameron. And it's not a dig to say that somebody might be a robot. Although, I mean, if we're talking like Star Trek universe, Jessica could certainly be like a lore type robot. Andy, okay, I mean, yeah. Yeah, Blaster Blaster was cool. He had his uh he had his moments. So there was a line of Transformers, and again, I, I don't remember what which thing was which, but they did these, and these were really, really cool. They had a couple of um a couple of these, and essentially what this does is it's a triple changer. Uh it changes into what looks like a cassette tape. And then it'll turn into a third mode i mean obviously like the parts are really chunky so this one turns into a a tank uh it's basically just like a box with a little box on top of it and you can plug in the gun to make it look like a tank pretty junky but in robot mode i mean this is rewind one of the original cassette tapes uh, and it's a pretty pretty good representation of, of how he looked then. And, slight digression, but important, uh, this toy and this look is also based on the comic books, the IDW run from that ended a couple years ago. They, they still, I think they still do Transformers comics. I don't know. I'm out of the loop on current comics. But um, the comic series, it's, it, at the start it was More Than Meets the Eye, Buzzsaw? Was that the other one? Okay. I thought... Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, so it started off called More Than Meets the Eye, and then it transitioned into Lost Light. So that, that was the one big series sort of broken up into two sections. Amazing, fantastic comic. I, I cannot recommend it highly enough. And one of the really interesting parts of that comic... Hey, Keen. Uh, is that that comic dealt with issues of gender and sexuality among Cybertronians. And you might be thinking, that's weird. This is a, this is a kid's toy property. Um, all sorts of stuff like that. Aridens, hello. But, um, but yeah, it, it did. It tackled all that kind of stuff. Why are transform? Why are some Cybertronians male coded or female coded? Um, what does that mean? Can it change? <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> we got a, we got a clip. Uh, what there are romantic relationships between Transformers. Uh, they're not, they're not. I, they're not sexual relationships, but there are romantic ones, and they have different classifications for what type of relationship you have. There's essentially, there's one that essentially means you're, like, best friends. There's one that's romantic without being sexual. And again, like, it, it was it was really interesting. And they, and they didn't present these as, like, oh, this is some weird thing we have to talk about. It was just sort of in the background, and it would come up, and, you know, in conversation. It was really cool. Anyway, so one of the, one of the most important relationships that we see across that whole comic book uh, was Rewind and Chrome Dome, who, if you know your Transformers history, was one of the first headmasters uh, toy a long time ago, and they brought it, brought him back in a couple of different iterations. But um, but yeah, so they had a, a really close romantic relationship, and it was really interesting to see that um, how they would do that in the comic books. So 
Big fan there. Uh, again, very classic cassette style for that one. Um, Patty, thank you so much for the resubscription. Uh, I'm doing fine. Patty, how are you doing with the move? A third party company, well, actually, several third party companies have made cassette tape style figures over the years. This one, by far, my favorite. I don't remember the name of the company, but they made, basically, they made a figure that looked eh, kind of like one of the cassette tape figures, obviously, with much more articulation and cool stuff going on, and then blasted this thing out in a million different color colorways. Uh, you can see, like um, Zardoz was just saying, like Rumble and Frenzy with these, these like pneumatic driver things. Uh, this one you could do different weapon options with it. This one's got swords. They made him a ninja, whatever. Uh, obviously, I got this one because of the color. It's super rad, and I love this toy. These are also very expensive, as a lot of these third-party companies can can be. Yeah, yeah. No, this was a really good one. Patty, you're alive and in the new place I'm unpacking. Thank goodness. I'm happy to hear that. Uh, moving is terrible enough on its own, and then uh, <laughs> your crazy situation was made it even worse. But I'm glad you made it. Hopefully the new place is good. Then, more recently, and, oh man, I don't even know. When did these toys come out? This has been sitting in my closet for a while. Then they did these. So this was the fall of Cybertron. Let's see if there's a, a year on this. Oh, wow. 2012. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, this has, been, this has been in my closet for quite a while. Uh, but they did a line where the cassettes were essentially discs. And, I don't know, they called them something. And they had little cases... Oh, data discs, and that tied into something from the TV show. I I don't think this is a no because they they actually there was a a sound wave where you actually plug it into its chat. I don't think this was. Oh no, Fall of Cyber. Yeah, that's a video game, right? Fall of Cybertron. This was in the Generations line, which was the uh, the line that was for technically for adult collectors, not because. They're dicks, but just because it's, uh, God, Darrow, I don't need to hear stuff like that. You were in elementary school in 2012. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Anyway, uh, Generations is really cool. Technically, that line, I don't think it exists anymore, but uh, they would mix in toys from video games, toys from comic books, toys G1 updates, like just whatever they thought, you know mature collectors would want as opposed to the kid stuff in the um uh the other lines so let's open this up and see what this looks like now when we talk about oh you know, so this is technically this is frenzy and rat bat And it says, Rat Bat is the most independent of the agents employed by Soundwave. He spends most of his time away from the others, engineering complex financial schemes rigged to cripple the Autobot network. Decepticon Frenzy, on the other hand, enjoys the company of others, if only so that his sonic interference can cause chaos among those around him. Wow, so Rat Bat is like a, um, uh, like a stock bro how I'm reading that. Oh, and they have, uh, oh, what do they call these? Um, the, the stats were originally, it was the, you had the red, the translucent red decoder thing you would put on it to be able to see it. Oh, there's a name for this. I can't remember what it is. Shoot. <laughs> Robot hedge fund, bro. Exactly. How rude. So we've got these little disc holders. Mm, is that a power bar? 
I'll remember it as soon as the stream is over. Yeah, Keen, it's definitely it's definitely a choice. Toy collectors, um, you know, some will keep things in their boxes, whether it's to keep them safe or for a perceived value. Um, I, on the other hand, I open just about all my toys. All right, so we've got Ratbat. He popped up even more from what he was in the package. And obviously you can sell, like, on the, the side that just closes up, there's not a ton of detail. This is all, like, a sticker, so there's it's completely flat. Uh, actually, a pretty decent little, little rat bat head on there. And he's got some... De weird details in there. This part, this part's pretty cool. And the gimmick here is that essentially they they just fold up into the disc, and then they just and then they pop open. They're pretty simple, even on this small sheet. There's a bunch of open space. All right, changing to data disc. Oh, that's cool. The head moves that whole thing. We fold it in. Fold it up. We like to hear the nice clicks. And we have... How's it going, buddy? You want what? Oh, okay. So we've got our little data disc that can plug into Soundwave's chest. There's a little peg here. Or any other um, bot that had... That um, stop thing. Okay, and then oh, and then so if you have your little boxes, you can put them in the box. Oh, he does not want to fit though. Well, anyway, you get the idea. I'm not going to smash it in there. And then to transform it, go, go, go! Oh, come on. Well, it was supposed to pop. <laughs> it didn't didn't quite make it. But you get the idea. Nah, it's, it's all right. Daddy. Yeah, buddy. I have one of those. You do? Yeah. Did you get it from my collection? Okay. Okay, no, it's like, yeah, stay back, stay back, stay back, buddy. You got to stay over here. Thank you. Uh, do I shop... Do you thrift store, toy shop, or new items only? Um, it varies. I'll look for toys anywhere. <laughs> I do like opening toys, but I've definitely bought stuff that's, you know, secondhand. Daddy. Tech specs. That's it. Thank you so much. Yes. You know, there's a little bit of funny one and the one. Okay, thank you. Okay, go go play. Go go build your Legos, and I'll see what what you do after when I'm done. All right. So this now you're ready to get into uh, the big fight. This, according to the box, this is frenzy. Now they've got a couple of added details on here. That he's got push out feet. The arms in the package were up like this. So you just got to move them down. There are hands, so you can see the arms need to go down. These are pretty awful robots. I mean, as long as they're just standing there, you get the idea. But, like, for because of the transformation, there are a bunch of springs. So you're very limited as to how you can pose these things. And everything kind of moves in weird ways. But staying on the shelf, it's fine. And this joins. Rewind. Eject. So now I have three. Uh, I do not have rumble from this line. I don't know. Maybe one day I'll chase it down. I don't know if I really... I was going to say I don't really need it, but if I've got three, might as well <laughs> find the fourth one. Uh, obviously, same mold for these two. Interestingly that it's different, you can see a different uh, lower torso piece here. So they didn't just reuse the whole thing. And then different... The head is different. Hmm. They all have the same transformation, though. They just fold up into the disc. 
Hey, hey, buddy. I'm okay. I, I'm on my show, so you go play, and I'll let you know when I'm done. Okay. Go play some more. You can play with something else. You don't have to keep playing with Legos, but go play while I'm on my show, okay? Then do stickers. Okay. And then other designs for, again, very similar transformation. Well, look, I said now that I have three, I might as well get the other one. And then, of course, you got to have Ram Horn, the Rhinoceros cassette. Classic. Now, there's a long running argument among Transformers fans. What, you might be saying? Nerds have arguments? Nerds have points of contention? It's the dumbest argument of all, which makes it the best argument of all. Is this actually Frenzy? Or is this Rumble? I've mentioned this before. I know I know some of you know what I'm talking about. Zardoz, maybe you. I think uh, Arsenal Roy, maybe. Rabbit Wombat, I think you know this one. So the original cartoon. <laughs> I, this is pr this is a pretty dumb, pretty dumb debate. So the original Transformers cartoon. We're talking 1984. Made. No, oh, okay, Arsenal. Uh, maybe it was Rabid Wombat. I, I I know I've talked about this before, and somebody knew what I was, what I was referring to. So cartoons in the early '80s, early to mid '80s, were done for you know as cheap as possible, and often it was. Oh, maybe I was. Um, maybe I'm thinking of somebody else. Never mind. Maybe this is new to everybody. Uh, yeah. So they would. The the designers, you know, there were. They would draw out what they wanted things to look like, and they would go to the animators. Um, there, you, you've got key frames, like the important frames, and the ones in between would be animated by other people, and the color would happen in a separate thing. It's all this crazy stuff. So, yes, yeah, so there were two Decepticon cassette people. They had the exact same shape and form. One was red, and one was blue. Uh, and... A couple of times they're referred to by name in the cartoon. More often they're just in the background standing around doing stuff. Uh, and yes, there is. there are color swap issues. In, in one episode, uh, the, the one who's there changes color. Uh, they refer to the different ones by different color, by the different names. So there's a contention among Transformers fan as to which one is which. And this, if you're a Transformers fan and you have any interest in this, you fall into one of two camps. Are you ready for this? There is the fur rib camp and the uh, or the fur rib. No, I did that same one. Uh, wait. <laughs> What's the other one? I'm Fur Rib, so I always forget what the other one is. But anyway, it's either Frenzy is Red, Rumble is Blue, or the other way around, but I can't remember which way it goes. Wow, I can't, how come I can't remember this? Frenzy is Blue. Fib, Fibrer, I guess, would be the other one. Uh, you get the idea. So yeah, and in, and in the old days on Transformers forums, you'd like you'd put that in your, uh, in your as part of your little avatar thing or in your, uh, in your signature, you'd you'd say what camp you were in, Frenzy is red, or Rumble is red. It's a pretty dumb argument. Because the answer is, of course. <laughs> no one is right until they tell you which one. So frenzy is red. I mean, that's there. There's no argument now. It's just, it's red. Yeah. So. Rumble is blue. Mm-hmm. 
So there's a little super nerdy Transformers backstory and a look at some cassette tapes and data discs. I'm trying to think of those later combining cassettes. And they also, they gave them really silly names. And then when they combined, the name combined for the combiner character. So there was a set that, there was a cassette that turned into a bird. I think it was an eagle, technically. And a cassette that turned into a gorilla. And those cassettes' names were Squawk Talk and Beast Box. And then when you combine them, they became Squawk Box. <laughs> Which is just, just the silliest thing ever. And then there was an, there was another pair too where it was like a tank and a plane. I can't remember the names of that one, but silly stuff. All good. All right, moving on from Transformers. Let us look at. Let's do let's do Marvel. Do a little Iron Man. Obviously, we're talking about Hulkbuster, which often breaks the scale of whatever toy line it's in because it's just so big and so powerful. Uh, if they don't break the scale, then it looks really dumb next to the other toys because it's supposed to be so much bigger. Which they did basically with these Jada Nano Metal Figs. Uh, this is, while it's it's big and bulky, it is not really any larger than a any of the other ones. But, you know, scale doesn't matter in little toys. Scale doesn't matter in most toys. So we've got a comic book style Hulkbuster here. These are MCU style. This one has the... How does this one work? opens up so you can put a little Iron Man inside of it. Uh, yeah, I mean, we love jokes here. Very simple articulation on these. Uh, there are much more heavy-duty and cool-looking Hulkbuster toys out there. I, I do not have them. Hulkbuster toys, like I said, they're often huge. They're often very expensive. Okay, Jessica's joke. In the old days, excessive use of commas was considered to be a serious crime. It usually resulted in a long sentence. <laughs> I loved it. Excellent. Uh, and then, yeah, this is from the Infinity War toy lineup. Uh, just, just brutal. This toy is goddamn terrible. The proportions on this thing are insane. What is going on? with this body, this just absolutely tiny, but epically, comically wide torso, and then these let like, it's just, it's a mess. But it was cheap, and it's big enough that it looks cool next to my smaller figures. Uh, you know, technically this came in a line of figures that were about, they're about four inch scale, so... It's not, it's not big enough, but it is out of scale. Uh, I'm trying to see if I have one of those handy. Where is that? You know, I don't know. I don't know if I have any of the standard figures from this line. They were really bad. Um, these were definitely made for kids. Uh, they had little. Not little. They had big infinity gem stones, whatever, uh, that you could stick on them and stuff. It was, uh, yeah, it was not a great toy line. You may have seen them at your local Target, places like that. Yeah, I mean, it's there's there's no way a person could... <laughs> right, or Zardoz, yeah, unless you're you're completely sitting inside the, the top section. The back, that's kind of cool. 
But again, like, you know it's a kid's toy when you turn it around and then you you think you might have gone colorblind because there's just one color. Uh, I don't have a super cool Hulkbuster toy to open today, but what I do have is one of my only things from the Disney Infinity line. Now, if you're not familiar with this, uh, it's because, well, Disney killed it. But this was a... Okay. Skylanders. Skylanders kicked off a craze of video game systems in which you had a portal device and you bought toys and you would interact. I think Skylanders was the first one. I mean, Skylanders was the big one. I'm sure there have been other things before it. Uh, and then the toy would connect to the base or the portal or whatever it was called. And then on screen, it would show up in some way, some form or another. Uh, Disney's Infinity was going to be like, I mean, it was for a while, this amazing thing. It had characters from all across Disney properties. They could all interact and play against. Uh, I, I've never, I haven't played Skylanders, but I, I know of it. I've, I've. I've known other people with children who have played it, and I've seen the toys. Uh, I got, <laughs> I got a couple toy Skylander toys, as New York, New York Toy Fair exclusives, which I promptly sold for lots of money back in the day. But um, yeah, so Disney Infinity again, a pretty cool system. I didn't play that one either, but I've seen a lot of the stuff, and they did toys. This was from the final version of the game. Uh, and yeah, there was they did, had a really neat art style to it. You can kind of see on these little ones. So you got a bunch of Marvel. They had, I mean, this line was expansive. Marvel, Star Wars, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, Tron, all the Disney princesses, Disney good guys, bad guys, you name it, it was in this line. I think I might have one more of these somewhere. I mean, I guess if you still have the game, you might be able to play it as a code. Uh, Lego also had a game like this. I don't think that's still going, right? The I go something worlds. So it's got like this chip on the bottom. I always wondered if you could just pop this thing off and then like if I wanted the toy and then I can just sell the disc to somebody who wants it for their game. Right, yeah, Lego killed that one as well. So yeah, more of a cartoony style. <clears throat> Obviously chunky, but pretty dynamic pose Oh, I like the like the the pistons and the arms. That's a cool back piece too. Yeah, this one was cool. I I I liked more of the like the robotic and armor kind of things in this line and this artwork. The the human characters Sometimes could get really goofy with their proportions. More cartoony than anything else, but um, but yeah, this is neat. It doesn't do anything without the game. It just sits there. It's just a little statue. But um, yeah, it's cool. I picked up a few of these toys um, when, like, right up when as soon as the game ended, uh, you could find these things on clearance at a bunch of toy stores. I mean, this was back... I bought this at a Toys R Us. So this was a number of years ago. So I bought a few of them uh, to give away to people and to do stuff with. Yeah. And another Hulkbuster for my collection. I also like that he's got, uh, like, stabilizing toes in the back of his feet. That's cool. Uh, this was, yeah, this was for Disney Infinity. So if you had the base, you could connect this toy, and then this would appear in the game. 
So this is already my coolest Hulkbuster toy. Hulkbuster. Although, I, you know what? Let me think. Because I do have some Heroclix Hulkbusters. They're not great, though. Yeah? Outside. What's outside? Oh, okay. We have that. Yeah. Okay, buddy. He's very excited about something. I'm not quite sure what it is, but that's fine. Yeah, the, that. Yeah, I was just thinking Arsenal. Royal. Yeah, that's probably the the best one. There was. <laughs> WizKids had this great idea to, in a set. To include pieces of a Hulkbuster armor, and you had to collect all the pieces. Well, you could play them as items that would that you could attach to somebody and give them a buff. Like uh, basically, like there was a a Hulkbuster arm, and you could give it to a character who would essentially like put it on and then be able to have another power. But if you collected well, all the pieces and got the base, then you could actually build the whole thing and then run that in the game, which was neat. Yeah, Peg Junk, essentially, a, yeah, a Chase build a figure in <laughs> in a blind boxed collectible miniatures game. Fun. All right, we've got our Marvel. We'll move those aside. Thank you for the follow, official Jeff Goldblum. I'm honored that you're here. Yeah, they haven't really done that again with the, the Build-A-Figure in the Hero Clicks. Alright, we're going to go over to... We're going to jump from Marvel and the M MCU, kind of. We're going to jump over to DC. Yeah, I've got uh, I've got bed, red water today. Ooh, yeah, yeah. It's it's a holiday weekend for those of us here in the United States. Well, for some people in the United States, not everybody gets off. Uh, what other figure could you do that with? Oh, thank you so much, official Jeff Goldblum for the host as well. Appreciate that. Uh, I mean, I'm sure we could think of other things that you could do with build a figure. Yeah, actually, Arsenal, you read my mind. I was just thinking, yeah, metal men to make alloy. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of the Metal Men and Alloy. I have all those hero clicks. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure there's other things. I'm sure we could think of other things. Let's put it that way. But we're going. The, the most recent set of Metal Men and Alloy in hero clicks, super cool, because you could run Alloy, and then when it was knocked out, it could split apart into metal men and uh yeah i actually i got to play that i played that once was it on indomitable over at hyper it might have been or maybe, maybe not i don't know but um yeah and then there was the there was the old one as well Why is it, Uncle it is i'm gonna i'm gonna look at it now okay Right. Okay. I'll see you soon. Uh, I do have Metal Men action figures as well. But like I said, we are jumping from Marvel and the MCU over to DC. And not only DC, but the DC animated universe. Yes, yeah, so it was the last day of uh, this week's camp, so... Chris took Benjamin to camp, and I've got Max running around, just doing whatever whatever he's doing. <laughs> so we've got Green Lantern, Hal Jordan, my favorite comic book character over the years, uh, specifically from the animated movie Justice League War. Based on the DC Universe Warner home video. 
This was made by DC Collectibles back when that company existed. It does not anymore. Um, I was always kind of... I saw what they were going for with this packaging. It's, it's very clean, but there's just so much empty space. I mean, it gives you great views of the figure, but there's nothing else going on. There's no accessories, no... No base, nothing else doing. There's this little tiny band of images behind it. I don't know. It, it's it's a waste. And this was in the era of DC's Peel logo. So they added that to the package. That's why it has the one sort of cut off. Everything had to have like a peel. Yes, they stabbed Darkseid in the eyeballs. You gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, there's what he looked like in the animation. And then, pretty simple, buy some more. We got Superman, Flash, Wonder Woman, and Shazam. Now, the design's clearly based on the New 52. With some changes here and there, uh, and again, if you remember, well, some of them. Wonder Woman in the New 52 went through several different design iterations uh, this is this is not exactly the comic book New 52. This is more the animated. It's a little bit different. Shazam is basically always just slight variations on the same theme. Uh, same with Flash. Has some of the lines on there, but not a lot of the lightning. And, yeah. Now, this was a time also when figures were getting more expensive, but not necessarily including more stuff which was annoying uh, but at the same time and and I want to give them credit DC collectibles was adding a lot more articulation that hadn't been around before so even though you weren't getting other stuff with your figures you could do more with posing them which again for a lot of collectors that's a big deal for me you know, as I've always said, the most important thing for me is that my toys look good on the shelf, because that's where they're going to be most of the time. And as long as I can have my figure in a cool, you know, appropriate pose, and it looks good, I don't need a million points of articulation. Articulation on a figure is generally ugly. You got exposed joints, uh, they're hard to cover up, you got joints in weird places, depending on the... Uh, character design and the toy design so I don't need a million joints lots of toys out there have too many for my taste um, Marvel Legends people love that line I think the off, often they're over articulated they don't look as good as they would have if they were if they had less articulation Ugh. Okay. so if you see I don't know how well you can see, but there are some really shiny spots. And that is it's like a grease that you sometimes get. Oh, fun. Oh, I wanted to mention, so I'm reading a book called Poorly Made in China. And it's all about Chinese... Oh, that sucks. Okay, well... <laughs> Speaking of, so it's all about Chinese manufacturing horror stories, essentially. All right. So first off, uh, yes, sometimes you open toys and they'll have an oily residue on it. Typically, it doesn't affect the toy in any huge way. Uh, you can just rub it off with your finger or get something to clean it off and it's not not a big deal um, so there's that now unfortunately so again this toy is old it's let's see when did this toy come out do, 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 do. i don't see a date on it but yeah i mean if you look up whatever, whenever this movie came out it's it's getting it's been a few years unfortunately in the package the joints stuck, and then when I moved it, it just broke the paint here at the corner. 
So there's like a scuff there now in the paint. It's not the end of the world. And again, I can just pose it with the arm up a little bit and most of that will vanish. But, but it is annoying. It's got a little bit on this side too. That's not great. Oh well, what are you going to do? Yeah, they, there's like, they did the barest effort of painting a rectangle on his finger. It's, it's a ring, sure. Okay, there are some really weird proportions going on on this toy. I don't know how much you can tell. Uh, obviously, he's got these really long legs, but <laughs> check out his neck when you go... In the side view. <laughs> I, I don't think a human body is supposed to look like that. But it does give you some options for head articulation. Up and down. I mean, that's a wild... It's a wild Adam's apple and... I don't know. There's <laughs> he swallowed a melon. Yeah. <laughs> One thing that often happens with action figures is that a lot of times, and in, in this case, their their heads don't go back very far, and obviously you can tell like that's just a limitation of the design. You know how how do you do how do you do the neck and the back of a head if you want a figure's head to be able to go back? Some do. Some toys will add a second neck joint where the neck meets the torso, so that joint can move back. Um, it really, the reason why I bring this up is because sometimes when you have characters who are known for their flying, it's nice to be able to try to pose them in such a way, you know, where they're flying, and you want to get that head back a little bit. This one cannot do that. Uh, he can look down like a boss. For whatever good that's going to do me, uh, but and then straight obviously, but not not back, and side to side. I mean, it's a thing. Yeah, there's it's weird. And again, this comes off of not it's not exactly the new fifty two look, but it's it's based on it, and then in. If you remember your new 52 at the very beginning, uh, when Jim Lee, when Jim Lee was in charge of the first illustrations for these characters and sort of the base that then other artists went off of, uh, everybody had collars as part of their costumes or their uniforms. Hal essentially had the same costume as he had pre New 52. The big difference was there were like these weird shoulder accents. Almost like it was armor, but it was hard to tell. Artists would do various things and kind of throw those away pretty quickly. Here they just kind of replicated that idea with just some neat little squiggly designs. Yeah, his little uh, his sandals. <laughs> They're glowy. Uh, overall, as far as an action figure goes, it's it's not bad. The articulation is is good, especially again for a, for a. DC Collectibles figure. He's got ball joints here in the hips that are, you know, they're they're definitely restricted, but, you know, I mean, look, you can, no, we don't step on things like that. That's not nice. No, thank you. That's, but I might need that for something. We don't step on things without asking, okay? Okay. Can you come on down, please? I'm almost done, okay? Okay. So you go play and I'll be there soon. Okay? I did. I did. Well, you can go play some more. I, I might hang out of the drawing thing. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll come and see it very soon. You can do hands on his hips. Um, yeah, and again, as, as I talk about a lot, it's, it's all well and good to do ball joints in the hips. But if all you have are ball joints and then just a standard knee joint, 
as soon as you start getting into any kind of try to do an interesting pose, well, there's also, there's no rotation here, which makes it really difficult for any of these poses to be meaningful. You can see where, see where this is going. Usually in modern action figures, there'll be, there'll be a, a cut joint here to swivel the thigh or as part of the knee assembly. So you could swivel or even a lower leg swivel, but there's nothing here and no ankle articulation. So a, a lot of this, I mean, you can kind of give him like a little bit of a wider stance if you wanted, but most of what you, most of the, the posability you can get here is going to be useless as far as standing up the action figure. Arms, there's a ball joint in the shoulders that decent. And then we've got a bicep joint and an elbow joint, which again kind of looks ugly depending on how you do it. And it looks, and it's got this weird, it looks like he's got a spur. It's not the, I mean, it's got nice movement to it, but you do have to be careful how you pose them to make it look not super unnatural. Hello, Tiny Chris. And then we already looked at the, <laughs> the super weird neck thing that's going on. But, like I said, all in all, um, he stands really well. He's got pretty good-sized feet, and it's going to look good on my shelf with all of my other... Hello, tiny <laughs> I don't know if you heard that, but Maximilian just ran in and said, Hello, Tiny Chris. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. <laughs> he's, he's a very silly little boy. Uh, I didn't bring them all down... I have dozens and dozens of Hal Jordan specifically. This is an old DC, I believe this one was back when it was DC Direct. Hello, Rocket Boy. Rocket Boy? Who's Rocket Boy? So here's an old style one. A little bit more <laughs> severe in, in that face. And then a more yeah. modern. Okay, all right, buddy. All right. Uh, then this. I really like this one. This was a cool style. A raised emblem here. Where they were getting into much more lifelike faces, especially with the color. different scales here obviously <laughs> but you know when you put when you put them on the shelf it's just and again I have let's see one two three I have three shelves that are essentially all green lanterns so it's just a sea of green figures and now this one will join them he's very tall maybe it's just because he's so skinny yeah he's a little bit taller but all right. Cool. I just have to make room for him. My Green Lantern shelves are very full. <laughs> anytime I anytime I open a new one, it's like, oh crap! Now I got to reorganize everything. And actually, oh no, I have other ones that are waiting to go in there. Uh oh. Well. I just made more, more work for myself. Yeah, there is there is a Green Lantern core TV show in development for HBO Max. We'll see if it ever actually happens. The only things we know about it are that it's going to have... Well, actually, we, we did get a little bit of an info dump about that a couple months ago. That it's going to be an anthology series. It's going to be in different time periods. So we're going to get Alan Scott Green Lantern in the 40s, I think they said. The modern Green Lantern. There will be modern Green Lanterns. There are going to be a bunch of characters from the 
comics and new characters. Uh, yeah, we have uh, we actually have casting for a couple of characters. Finn Whitrock is going to be Guy Gardner. I am very excited about this casting. If you're not familiar with Finn, uh, he's a a mainstay on the American Horror Story series, starting with. Which one did he start with? He wasn't in there since the beginning, but um, he's been in uh, the the um, the carnival one, right? He was dandy, and he was amazing in that. Uh, and then he's been in the other ones. He was in Ratchet. He's yeah, he's been in other stuff too, but he's cool. Uh, Guy Gardner is, is a, a fascinating character that's been done in so many different ways in the comics. And he's been in some of the animated movies. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm really interested to see how how that combination comes together. Yeah, Erdinsk. Yeah, you're right. It's We'll see. Hopefully it won't be too over the top with that kind of stuff but but you never know i also man i i'd love for them to go super old school for alan's costume i mean i'm sure they're not going to i'm sure it'll be updated in some way hold on let me grab let me grab some examples uh, where's alan where's an alan that's easy to Well, I can't I can't reach the uh, the full size action figure, but this just gives you a sense of what what his costume looked like, and it was uh, yeah vintage baby. But what the hell, you know? I mean, do that. <laughs> I want to see that on screen. Now, Alan Scott has been around for a very long time, and they've updated his costume design. Uh, on multiple occasions, but it always had several of these these elements. But uh, but yeah, oh man, look at that, look at that collar, it goes all the way up. He's got a lantern symbol on his chest. Uh, Left-handed, so the ring is on his left hand. <laughs> it's not, it's not very HBO. Well, now Zack Snyder has nothing to do with this, so so you never know. Uh, and then, of course, you know him, you love him, Guy Gardner. God, he's such a great action figure. Just, just so cool. Yeah, shiny on the green. Great sneering face sculpt. Just lots of details in the gloves and the boots, too, and the belt. And there's, while it, it gives him, like, a, a silly kind of tough guy look, there's actually a reason why his, uh, his costume looks like this. But it goes way, way back to Emerald Dawn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ernest, that's a that's a good a uh, good point, but uh, but no, what is that? Thank you for the host, official Keanu Reeves. Uh, Keanu, I don't know, have you have you done any projects with Jeff Goldblum? Because he's here as well. Uh, for a long time, Guy was also known for his extreme bowl cut. Yeah, this is more. This is an older, more cartoony look. But uh, I mean, hey, if they bring that, if they bring back the bowl cut for the show, that would be that would be a choice. That would certainly be a choice. I could see Finn pulling it off. Yeah, and I've, we've talked before, but Guy Garner. Uh, Truly, truly an interesting 
an interesting character in the comic books. Um, started off as, I mean, he was he was a lawyer and a gym teacher, and he was like a, a good guy, but he was he had past issues with with anger stuff, and just like a level headed person, and then later he became just a joke character. Uh, <laughs> Justice League International stuff, and then became more of a tragic figure, and then he be- and then he had alien DNA, and he became warrior because he was a Voldarian. I think that's the right word. Uh, and then, starting in the Jeff Johns run, they kind of reinvented Guy Gardner to to a pretty pretty big degree, and um, you know g- gave him more more reasons for why he had been not the nicest guy in the past. Uh, we got a cool love story. Well, we had actually we had a, couple, we had a couple of interesting love stories with Guy Gardner. <laughs> and then his his absolute devotion to the core. Henry Cavill, welcome. <laughs> it's a it's a cavalcade of stars here on my stream this morning. And then notably Guy Gardner would also wear some other color rings. He was a red lantern. A few different times, uh, he even had a violet lantern because he loves the core so much. Mmm, that's good red water. So yeah, Guy Gardner, interesting character. I'm uh, I'm excited to see what they do with him in the show. It'll be very interesting to see if Hal Jordan appears in the show at all. Um, what? How? How much? It's not if, but how much Hal Jordan as a concept is is still toxic because of the movie. I mean, they have kind of hinted that Hal Jordan will return in some sort of big media at some point, but. Uh, they're clearly being very careful with how they how they figure out how to do it. And I don't blame them. I, I, I wish they would, and I wish they would do it well, but I can certainly understand because I think about that movie. That movie just had its, what, 10th anniversary? Maybe more? So I just saw some, yeah, some stuff about it. It's like, ugh. Yeah, the disappointment. The crushing disappointment of that movie. Ryan Reynolds cameo, sure. I mean, there were all those rumors that, yeah, that Ryan Reynolds would have a cameo in the Snyder Cut. Uh, didn't pan out, but those were those were fun, entertaining those for a minute. How did we get on this? Oh, yes, the, the TV show. Oh, I wanted to say, so the, the DC animated movies, there are a ton of them. A huge back catalog. And quite a few of them are really, really good. I know I've mentioned this before, but um, if you're looking for, you know, animated comic book content, definitely, definitely check out the DC movies if you haven't. Back, sort of, right, I think right before Justice League War came out, uh, these have been going on for years and years and years. And in the, like I said, the, the pre- in the, when Justice League War came out, they sort of rebooted the the core DC animated universe to be sort of online with the New 52. Uh, before that, it was just sort of like, do whatever. There was a Wonder Woman movie that was just about, you know, it was an origin story for Wonder Woman. And there were two Green Lantern movies, one an origin story and another one an anthology. And oh my god, those Green Lantern DC animated movies are fantastic. They're not always perfect with the lore, but... What are you going to do? Uh, great voice actors. Super fun. Highly recommend those. Uh, and the Green Lan- Lantern animated series. Again, they screwed around with the lore a little bit and some of the characters, but highly, highly recommend. Really, really good. Uh, that was another show canceled before its time. But the animated movie's super great. And th- through my connections to figures.com and the toys... Uh, I actually got to go to a bunch of the premieres for the DC animated movies. I had a connection at Warner Brothers in their press department. And so whenever there'd be a new movie, 
they'd send me in, hey, do you want to attend the thing? So for, man, probably half a dozen, I would go to Beverly Hills, go to the Paley TV, whatever they call it, the Paley Center for TV and whatever. Uh, they would, there'd be like a little red carpet area. They'd have voice actors and directors and producers that would come through and you got to ask each one, you know, like two questions. Uh, and then we'd get to watch the movie. So it was very cool. Very cool experiences. I got to meet all sorts of interesting people. Uh, Steve Niles, he was there because he wrote uh, he wrote the Spectre short for the DC animated movies. Uh, Dwayne McDuffie, I got to meet. I actually I got to meet him. It was shortly before he passed away. Just a, a bunch of people. It was yeah. Those those were really fun experiences. I don't know if they still do the premieres like that, but. We don't have that Warner Brothers connection anymore. But good times. And usually they'd send me the DVD afterward also for review. So I have a bunch of those sitting around somewhere. <laughs> Who knows? Um, let's see. I think I'll save I think I'll save the Star Trek for next time. So we've been chatting here for a while. Ryan Reynolds needs a cameo and everything. I, I mean I know they try. Ooh, I just realized that on the bottom of the nano metal, metal fig, it actually says Hulkbuster. I love it when toys and collectibles have the name of the character on the bottom. That's something that we don't see enough. Hot Wheels does that, which is in many of their things. Not all, always, but um, I always appreciate it when it has the name on there. Man... Ryan Reynolds is one of those people. There's a there's a list. There's a fairly long list, but man, if I could if I could get a copy of my book into Ryan Reynolds' hands, I think he'd get a kick out of it. If he could do a social media post. <laughs> so yeah, there's a there's a list of like dream dream people, dream geeks in the uh, that are well known who would be really cool to get my book to them. Patrick Stewart. Somebody is here. Somebody is here? Yeah. Well, that's weird. Uh, hold on one second, everybody. I'll be right back. Well, I don't, I don't see anybody. Kids and their imaginations. Yes, Nancy, Drusilla, Jean Philippe. Uh, the other, another one, uh, man, Stephen Colbert, like one of the biggest geeks in the world. He geek, he's a geek about a lot of things, but especially Tolkien. If you know anybody. <laughs> If you know know somebody who knows somebody, let me know. Uh, but yeah, always always challenges with you know promoting stuff and getting getting famous people, famous influencers to get their eyes on your things. Uh, so yeah, like I said, uh, I did have a Star Trek ship that I was thinking about opening today, but I'm going to save that because I can do a little bit more with it next time. Um, there was something else I wanted to talk about. About what was it? I don't know. Hey Max, quick! There's nobody out there. Okay, please stop. Just go play. I'll be right there. Okay, I'll be there in just a minute. Go, go look at your stickers. Theoretical physics. Oh man, so many theoretical physics. 
Uh, okay, let's see. We should raid somebody. Ooh, let's do that. Uh, thanks, everybody, for hanging out. This weekend is what? Well, this weekend is a big question mark. I'm going to be honest with you. I had a guest, a potential guest for the War Room stream tomorrow, and it fell through, as things do. I think we scheduled it before this person realized that, excuse me, that um, it was July 4th weekend. And hey, totally understand that it happens. Uh, so we'll, we'll reschedule that guest. But I am planning on being here tomorrow. I've got some stuff I, I am excited to talk about. Some Warhammer news and leaks that have happened about upcoming things, upcoming evolutions to certain games that I'm very interested in. Like uh, Horus Heresy. So if you want to hear my thoughts on that, definitely tune in. Also, I want to talk about Assassins. I was going to do that with the Geeks with Shields podcast, but um, we just ended up just having so much fun chatting about other things, we didn't get to it. So yeah, so that'll be... So I've got some fun topics for the War Room stream tomorrow. And then tomorrow night, Saturday night, I couldn't tell you. The... My, my friends, the home buddies, they are very busy people. And especially now... Lots of work opportunities and social opportunities. I do not begrudge them this whatsoever. Um, it does make group streams a little bit more of a challenge. So we'll see. I don't know who's available tomorrow night. I don't know where we will appear. Uh, if all else fails, we'll probably have another disco stream, Jessica and I. But I don't know. <laughs> there, there might be something more than that. I At this point, I couldn't tell you. Yeah, no, exactly, Darrow. I, like I said, I, I don't begrudge people, yeah, especially work opportunities, um, seeing friends and loved ones. It's, it is all good. Um, yeah, at some point, we might switch. Instead of like having a, a weekly scheduled group stream like this, we might switch it to you know a group stream every couple weeks, or I don't know, maybe we'll look at different days. Because, uh, yeah, it's definitely definitely getting tougher for the all the buddies to meet up on Saturday nights. So stay tuned. We'll, uh, we'll let everybody know on the Discord what's going on. And that'll be that. Have a great weekend, everybody. If you are here in the United States, happy July 4th weekend. Uh, please be safe. If you, don't, if you don't need to do the whole fireworks thing, then don't. Stay home. Don't be around other people. We got this fucking Delta variant of the coronavirus that's bad. Uh, yeah, don't blow yourselves up with fireworks. Also, please. So many dumb people out there. Hey, look, Max. Q. Maybe I can send a, a book to John Delancey. Although, again, I hear that guy's kind of a dick. <laughs> Jonah Hex. He was a Confederate soldier, but he got better. <laughs> Usually. Sometimes. Another comic book movie I don't necessarily recommend. Um, <laughs> yeah. Lots of tangents. Lots of other fun stuff we could talk about. For another day. All of that being said, we are going to raid someone who's not always, not always on overlapping my streams, but an old friend of mine back... From Geek and Sundry days. We are going to raid Trisha Hirschberger. And if you're not already following her, she is amazing. So you should definitely do that. And we are going to do that now. She's playing some video game? I don't know. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. That's a thing. Yes, Trisha is awesome. Uh, we did brick battles. We played with lots of Legos. Uh, she learned Heroclix. She picked Heroclix up in like two seconds and was 
all about it. It was it was really funny, really great. She got very competitive very quickly. <laughs> all right, everybody, be awesome. Thank you so much for hanging out, listening to me ramble on about toys. Uh, have a great weekend, and I'll see y'all at some point. All right, go say hi to Trish. Bye.